Muda. Oh, okay, only. Wow, what you that? No, could be a small Bible. I'm not going to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It's wonderful to join together on this All Saints Day, a day where we celebrate the saints, and a day for all age. So I'm glad that we've got some children with us as well. Before we get started on our service, though, just a couple of notices which I'm sure many of you will have seen on the TV. The government is announcing uh, another lockdown, which will begin on Thursday morning. Uh, this means that the church, although it will still be open for private prayer, individuals to come and pray and households to come and pray, um, and indeed the church will be open today and tomorrow for its services, but then we will, we will be closed and all the services will then be in person, sorry, will be online. All the services will be online. But we will continue to have the church open for private prayer, though, hopefully on Sunday afternoons, so we can still have people coming together for that. And so, oh, and time we're thinking maybe two till four? Yeah, two till four. So on Sundays, the church will be open two till four for private prayer, but otherwise all the services will be online. So although it is, again, with some sadness that we, we continue to have our freedoms restricted, Perhaps this is a good opportunity for us to turn heavenwards and to think about the saints, because the saints were often, their lives were marked by hardship and challenge and difficulty, and they became saints, they're celebrated as saints because they, they were able to find God in amongst the difficulties and the challenges. So I want to start by asking a question for particularly the smaller people amongst us, as to who our patron saint is. Who is the patron saint of this church? Any ideas? What do you think? What's the church named after? You're going to have to say it louder than that. That's right, St. Paul's, St. Paul's. Our patron saint is St. Paul. He is one of the saints. And in fact, according to the Bible, all Christians are saints. All Christians are holy ones. That's what being a saint means, being a holy one. 
because Jesus makes us holy. Jesus makes us holy. But there are some very special people, some people whose lives are so kind of orientated towards God that they have shone across the centuries and they inspire us and they encourage us. And those are the people who, in particular, we can celebrate to get to today. People like St. Francis, who we were marking the other day, who encourages us to celebrate the world, the environment, and all of God's creation. People like St. Luke, who uh, Christopher, our reader, preached on the other day, that encourages us to be evangelists and to share our faith and the good news with others. I was trying to think of somebody like a modern-day saint, somebody who inspires us. And in fact, the person I could think of that really inspires me is this man here. You can press N on the laptop and hopefully the picture will come up for those at home as well. This man here, I have found him really inspiring recently. I'm getting some nods, so I think some of us know who he is. For anyone who doesn't know, could somebody put their hand up who does and say, who is this man here, Claire? Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford, yes. Marcus has been incredible recently, standing up for children, standing up for families who struggle, particularly in school holidays, for school meals. And I think it's amazing that he's been getting his hands dirty, going into food banks and doing some incredible things. And so he is an example. I don't know what his, what his faith is, whether he's Christian or, or, or otherwise, but, but he is somebody who is inspiring. And so throughout our service today, I hope we can think of the saints in heaven who inspire us, who encourage us to do good things and better things. And so as we begin, we'll start as we always do, by first confessing our sins and the ways that we sometimes fall short. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the forgiven people of God, I'm now going to invite us to listen to some music as we pray silently the words of the Gloria. And that music is to a familiar tune to most of us, I'm sure. Let the saints come marching in. So let's think about the throne of God in heaven and all those saints celebrating and saying the Gloria together around the throne of God. we can picture all of those saints dancing around the throne of grace and we join our prayer with theirs. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we have our first reading from Scripture. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, sat standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing the glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might to, to, to be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? And they were, ha they were, have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are the, these are they who have come to our great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him every day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter him. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any such scorching heat. For the lamb at, at the creature, at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe every wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, called out of darkness into his marvellous light. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to give you something to take with you as you go back into lockdown. It's something I read in a small book on my desk. I've been reading pages from it since March. It's called The Ninefold Path by Mark Scandretti. Mark and his friends are musicians and theologians from around the world who have united themselves around a single project to bring Jesus' teaching of the Beatitudes alive and afresh for a new generation. They regard them as, quote, the world's path to recovery. They produced an album, but also that little book I have sitting on my desk. Each Beatitude in the Book of Reflections is called a beat, and I would like to share with you the nine beats in turn. Nine beats in nine minutes. I invite you to hold open your hands. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be poor? Poverty is when you don't have enough or you feel you don't have enough. Something is lacking. This beat invites us to own our own poverty. Where in your life do you feel that you do not have enough? When presented with such a question, our first instinct can be to close our hands, to grasp all that we have. This is a posture of scarcity. But today we're invited to trust in the abundance of a good creator. We're invited to open our hands, to live in gratitude, generosity, satisfaction. This is the way of trust. I invite you to put your head in your hands. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. This beat is an invitation to journey upon the way of lament, to face our pain. We human beings have always looked for ways to escape pain, but this rarely works. In ancient cultures, people knew how to mourn. They tore their clothes, they poured ashes on their heads. They sat in dirt and raised their voices in lament. When you look at the world, what breaks your heart? What do you see that grieves you? The beauty about a community of people like ours is that in times of lament, like this pandemic, we can carry those who mourn through our prayers and through our care. 
we must learn to sit and weep for ourselves and our world. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and to bow your heads. Blessed are the meek, beat three, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness is not a quality that is particularly valued in a world built on competition and comparison. If you want something, you've got to seize it, right? You've got to take it. The meek are assumed to get nothing. But what if we live differently? Humility. Humility is the quiet confidence and strength that comes from being at home with who you are. The prophet Isaiah said this, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. This beat invites us to use our strength to serve and not to oppress, to bow to the dignity of all. Beat four. I invite you to cross your fists and hold them up as a symbol of your power. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Something deep inside us tells us that the world is not as it should be. Nations are at war. Refugees struggle to survive. Children are separated from their families. We feel the pain of injustice. We ache for change. What is the hunger for justice that you have in you? We shape the world by our choices and by using the power that we have and the power of prayer. I invite you to make the shape of a heart with your hands. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. This beat invites us to look with the eyes of love, compassion, to look at ourselves and others through this lens, to pray for those you find difficult, to see their face through the heart in your hands. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I invite you to hold up your hands. A young child cannot hide their feelings. It's written on their face. Disappointed, happy, sad, excited. But over time, we learn to put on our masks. What would people think if I was truly myself? Would I be loved, warts and all? This beat encourages us to be real because God sees us without our masks. He sees us and declares, you are loved. We can be real. We can be honest. We can walk with integrity because he loves us just as we are. Beat seven. Blessed are the peacemakers. I invite you to reach out and join your hands together in a sign of embrace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. This beat invites us to seek peace, to pursue peace, to fight for peace, to love peace. The most common greeting in both Jewish and Muslim cultures is shalom, salam, peace. In Hebrew, the word shalom, it suggests not the absence of war, but the presence of right relationships, of wholeness, of the coming together of right relationships. We so easily live, though, with stereotypes, with assumptions. This beat encourages us to forge peace by being curious, breaking down walls, and uniting. I invite you now to hold out your hands in a gesture of surrender, as if to be arrested. I always find this the most uncomfortable, actually, of all the beats. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Francis of Assisi, Martin Luther King, Bonhoeffer, John of the Cross, the Apostle Paul, Jesus. These people are icons of doing good no matter the cost. Through history, people have endured violence arrest, imprisonment, and even death for standing up for what's right. 
But what if this path is not just for a few, but for us all? We are part of a world of broken systems, of racial injustice, of unfair taxation, of fragile welfare provision. The interests of the powerful are protected. Love demands us to stand up and to be counted, to discover creative, peaceful protest, bridging division. And finally, beat nine. Hold out your arms in the posture of the cross. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The first saints, the apostles, 11, were stabbed, stoned, beaten, or executed because of their faith in Jesus. Their faith in the one who makes the teaching of the way of eternal life and of love. People are still killed today because of their embrace of Jesus. Yet here, at the last of the Beatitudes, we come to the greatest of all the paradoxes. Life comes through death. The illusion that keeps us from living heroically, living as a great saint, is that death is somehow the end. But my friends, death is not the end. This beat invites us to ask, how would I live if I was not afraid of death? What is it worth to give my life for? Will I give my life for my God? If we have an answer for that, we can face anything. What might it look like for you to live today fierce, fearlessly? Shane Claiborne, Christian activist, he said, some people are tiptoeing through life just to arrive at death safely. But dear children, do not tiptoe. Run, hop, skip, laugh and jump. Just don't tiptoe. So I end this reflection with a final prayer from the book. That book, that small book sitting on my desk that I've been reading since March. See if you can keep up with the actions if you can. Let us pray. Lord, help me today to live with open hands. To mourn what is broken. To serve with self-respect. To use my power for good. To look with compassion. To walk in honesty. To reach past difference. To suffer for love. To live fearlessly following the way of radical love. Let us live with open hands, mourn what's broken. May we serve with self-respect, use our power for good, to look with compassion, to walk in honesty, to reach past difference, to suffer for love and to live fearlessly. Let us live with open hands, mourn what is broken, serve with self-respect, to use my power for good, to look with compassion, to walk with honesty, to reach past difference, to suffer for love and to live fearlessly, following the way of radical love. Amen. This is the path of the saints. So as we celebrate the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Beatitudes, let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, I invite us to sit or kneel as you're able for our prayers of intercession. United in the company of the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, we offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation, to the praise of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Sarah, our Bishop, and Rob, Bishop of Edmonton, and all ministers of your church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. We thank you for those great witnesses, for those who inspire us and encourage us in the faith. We thank you for St. Paul, our patron. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your holy and life-giving Spirit to live the teachings of the Beatitudes, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ from glory to glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the world and its peoples that peace which comes from above, that they may find Christ's way of freedom and life. We pray for those places where there is war, for those who are doubly suffering, both from bombs from the air and a lack of hospital care for those struggling with COVID. Amongst them, we pray for the Yemen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your embrace, O Lord, all who witness to your love in service of the poor and needy, for all who minister to the sick and dying, to all who bring light to those in darkness. I pray especially at this time for our government, for the NHS, and for each one of us here present and all of us at home, that we would stay strong that we would be lights in the darkness, that we would help to stem this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Touch and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured by pain, that raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may be turned to eternal joy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Hasten that day, O Lord, when all will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit around the table in your kingdom, sharing the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uniting our prayer with the whole company of your saints in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. We are fellow citizens with the saints. We are part of the household of God through Christ, our Lord, who came and preached peace 
to those who are far off and to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a socially distant sign of God's peace with us. Peace, peace be with you. Those at home do do a message on YouTube as a sign of peace. Peace be with you. In a moment we'll come to distributing the Holy Eucharist. I'm very mindful that this will be the last service we have in person for about four weeks, so it's really wonderful that we're here together to, to share this. But we hold in our hearts all of those who are shielding, all of those who are at home, all of those who are unable to be here in person. And over the next month, we will all need to be strong. And I encourage you all to hold in your hearts as we pray this Eucharist, this Thanksgiving, hold in your hearts those saints in heaven, that we're never alone, even when we're on our own in our homes. The saints are always with us. They accompany us. They're there in the heavenly realm. And of course, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, He is with us too. He walks with us every step of the journey. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and glorified in the assembly of your saints. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. We, your holy church, acclaim you in communion with angels and archangels, and with all who served you on earth and worship you now in heaven, we raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, 
Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and again he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Both those here in church and those gathered at home. Send your Holy Spirit and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of St. Paul, Our Lady St. Mary, St. Francis, St. Luke and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. With saints and martyrs throughout the ages. Amen. This afternoon, we have our usual service of evening prayer at 4.30, and I very much encourage you to come if you're able. Uh, Lynn will be playing on the guitar, leading us in some reflective, quiet time of, of prayer, just for half an hour or so. So please do come if you're able. But as I was saying in the introduction, all of our services from, well, we've got a service on Monday night, but then from, from Monday onwards, we'll be online and the church will just be open for private prayer on a Sunday afternoon, two till four. Oh, and before you go today, there will be some Christmas cards on sale um, near the door. Sylvia very kindly has been working on that. So if you would like to get any cards to send to friends and family, please do take an opportunity to do that now. But finally now, as we prepare to go back out into the world, I'm gonna pray for God's blessing upon us and I've got a short video of um, the Blessing UK, the words of blessing that people from across churches across the UK were singing in, in May. And I think we need to hear those words afresh over us today. So I invite you please to stand for the Blessing.
blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you all now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God.